Hello, welcome back to the Statman Dave YouTube channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at five players Arsenal should sign in the January transfer window. Of course, don't forget to like the goddamn video and subscribe if you're new and turn the notification bell on. This video is brought to you with Coral. Anyway, let's get this party started. First, let's talk a little bit about Arsenal in general. The bottom line is they've got a lot wrong post Wenger. They clearly made a mistake in terms of the appointment of managers and their player recruitment has arguably been so worse. Arsenal's centre-back recruitment is a microcosm of the club's issues. They clearly needed a central defender in the summer and they ended up signing a 32-year-old who was clearly on the decline and an 18-year-old who wouldn't even be available for selection until next season. There's a real lack of medium-term thinking with the club either taking chances on promising teenagers like Saliba and Guendouzi or bring in short-term fixes like Louise or Socrates. This disjoint recruitment policy could be more damaging to Arsenal, but they've gotten away with it to an extent due to the strength of their academy and the fact that Guendouzi is seemingly miles ahead of where he should be in terms of his development. So what needs to change? They need to work on identifying a model. For example, everyone who's paid attention to RB Salzburg would have likely seen Takumi Minamino as a perfect Liverpool player. And sure enough, Klopp has snapped him up. For the purpose of this video, we'll be suggesting that Arsenal should be recruiting players who are aged between 18 and 25, but are ready to be started on signing. The harsh reality is that Arsenal could get everything right in the next two transfer windows, but they still wouldn't be able to mount a genuine title challenge. So building for a team that can be at the peak of his powers in a few couple of years, when the cycles at other big six clubs have come to an end, could be the perfect solution for Arsenal. Let's start at the back, and that is clearly where Arsenal need the surgery. The current centre-back options are beyond uninspiring. Socrates and David Luiz are two of the oldest players in their squad, and neither look comfortable at playing at the top level anymore. And Mustafi has just simply failed to adapt to the Premier League. There's some talented young centre-backs at the club that we touched on earlier, but I think Arsenal should be looking to sign more players that fall into that category. My first suggestion is long-term target, Umbacano. The RB Leipzig centre-back has really kicked on under the tutelage of Julian Nagelsmann, going from one of the most promising centre-backs in the league to one of the best in the Bundesliga. His ability on the ball is excellent. In the Champions League group stages this season, Umbacano played the ball into the final third 61 times, which is more than any other centre-back in the competition, with Van Dijk in second and Benucci in third. The company he's keeping in terms of this metric serves to highlight just how good the 21-year-old is good with the ball at his feet. He's also fundamentally a great defender, winning an impressive 93% of his tackles and 64% of his aerial duels in the UCL group stages. The young Frenchman is one of the most complete centre-backs around, and because of this, he won't come particularly cheap, but he's got the potential to be Arsenal's long-term starting centre-back for over a decade. So a no asking price should put the Gunners off. Another good option we Celtics, Christoph Ayer. Another ball playing centre back. Ayer is impressed in the Europa League this season as Celtic beat Lazio home and away and ultimately won the group. He doesn't have the pedigree of Umbacano, but he's someone who could see to rival William Saliba for the second centre back slot or potentially slot into a back three. The Norway international's ability to identify danger in the wide areas and come out and deal with it is really impressive and is something that Arsenal could really use given the attacking nature of their fullback. In the home game against Lazio, Ayer made five ball recoveries, four interceptions, three tackles and committed two fouls, with 11 of those 14 actions coming on the left flank, as Bolingoli had pushed into an advanced position as Elenusi was narrowing ahead of him. Undoubtedly the most impressive thing about Ayer as a footballer though is the quality of passes he plays into midfield. Not only is he able to break lines from deep with his impressive range, but when he needs to play those simple passes into midfield, they all seem to have enough zip, which allows the central players to turn quickly and play forward. He's ultimately a very technical centre-back and used to play in central midfield, but it does have a tendency to come a little bit too tight sometimes. However, that's something that you'd expect to decrease uh, in his game as he develops. He's only 21 years old. Similarly, you'd want him to fill out a little bit in order to deal with the physicality of the Premier League, but he's clearly got the frame to grow into. For a relatively small fee that Celtic would probably require, these are small issues. So let's Let's move on to midfield, but what I think Arsenal need here is someone who can place Granit Xhaka's progressive passing without having the defensive deficiencies that have plagued the Swiss midfielder. I think deploying Lucas Torreira as the midfield destroyer with two more progressive eights ahead of him would be the best way to go long term. Although they'll need to bring in some flexibility, someone who can play in the hole, and we'll get onto that next. But I think in terms of midfielders, I think Ibrahim Sangara would be an excellent signing. The Ivorian is currently playing his trade in Ligue 1, where he plays for Toulouse and was reported uh, to be a target 
target for Everton as a long-term replacement as Idrissi Garner Gay. In Liga this season, Sangara has played more passes into the final third than any other player, which highlights just how good consistently he's able to progress the ball from deep, but also he really racked out the tackle stats last season. Unlike someone like Granit Xhaka, Sangara has that defensive awareness that's excellent. His positioning is very, very good and he can reliably win the ball back. He's averaging a very healthy 3.3 tackles plus interceptions per game in the league this season. Arsenal over the past few years have tended to have midfield players who excel in one department but are lacking in others. For example, Granit Xhaka is a great ball progressor but net negative defensively. Whilst Lucas Torreira is a great destroyer, but a little bit indifferent when it contributes in terms of the final third or getting the ball into that zone. Adding someone in like Sangre, someone who is comfortable either side of the ball and can adapt his role based on the type of game he'd be playing in would massively improve Arsenal. Toulouse are really struggling this season too, so you imagine you'd be able to get him out of France for a pretty decent price. Penultimately, let's talk about the most marquee of the five signings, Kai Havitz. The German wonder kid is capable of playing on the left side of attack but is more effective as a number 10. Arsenal could accommodate have it in a 4-3-1-2, a 4-4-2 diamond, a 4-2-3-1, or a 4-4-1-1. If they want him to play that role, I think that's definitely what they should be looking at. The Bayer Leverkusen prodigy has often been dubbed as the next Mezzo Ozil, which is mostly rooted in the fact that he plays behind a striker and is German. But in fact, they're very different players. Havertz is more of a natural goal scorer than a creator. He's also a very willing presser and is very versatile. All things that are not true of Ozil. Interesting though, Havertz's key passes per game is higher than his shots per game in the Bundesliga for the first time this season, which suggests that he's making better decisions and developing the creative side of his game. He was a top-scoring teenager across Europe's top five leagues in the 1918 season with an impressive 17 league goals. So that's not to suggest that taking those shots last season was a bad thing. The Ozil comparison is valid in so much as that he would directly replace him in the Arsenal side. He'd make it much easier for them to play a high-pressing system and would make it much easier for them to build an attacking structure which doesn't rely too much on a moment of magic between one of their big names forwards. There's always a payoff with Ozil. You know that he causes you a headache in terms of defensive shape, but he'll create around three chances per game, which usually balances things out. But the German playmaker has been very, very poor this season, whereas chances created from open play are closer to zero than to three. So it's very much likely that we moved on. The downside though to bring in Havertz is that Arsenal would have to break the bank for the highly rated goal scorer. But given his consistent goal contributions in a top league, it's a pretty low risk move, probably for around 100 10 million pounds. Finally, we can look at how Arsenal can future-proof their striking options. Lacazette and Aubameyang are undoubtedly both excellent forwards, but they're both the wrong side of 27 and realistically aren't going to feature in the next great Arsenal side. So the club needs to look at who can lead their line and they can build on. Eddie Nketiah and Gabriel Martinelli are both very realistic options, but I think it'd be wise to bring back PSV forward Daniel Mali back to the club. It's unclear whether or not Arsenal have a buyback clause on the former academy player, but what is clear that he's going to be a top, top player. Before picking up a knee injury that would keep him out for around four months, Malan was directly involved in area of goal every 92 minutes. Bringing back Malan would mean that the club would have three long-term centre-forward options in Martinelli, Nketiah and Malan, all very different strikers. Malan is an explosive, pacey forward, Nketiah is more of a poacher, and Martinelli is more of an industrial, pressing forward. Arsenal need options in the long term. Malan is certainly worth bringing back, especially if there's some kind of agreement between Arsenal and PSV. But anyway guys, what do you think? Who should Arsenal sign in January and in the summer beyond? Get into the comments below. I've been Statman and Dave's video is brought to you with Coral. Like the goddamn video, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, why not check out some more content on the Statman Dave YouTube channel?